Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Nerd Paints. So for this episode, we are going to paint Darth Vader. So for Darth Vader, I want to paint him and his base based off of the Mustafar system. And as you know, the Mustafar system is lava based, and that's where he had his last battle with Obi-Wan Kenobi, and that's where his castle supposedly is, his headquarters. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to prime him with black. So if you want to, you can also look for my other episode. I have an episode on how I prime my miniatures. So if you want to refer to that, if you have any questions on how I prime these, then go ahead and check that episode. But once you've primed them with black, make sure it's completely dry. And for our first paint, we're going to take some Fenrisian gray. I'm going to add this to a wet palette. So if any of you want to know how I created a wet palette, look for another video. I have a video posted on how to build a custom wet palette. Um, I'll also post down below the wet palette that I use that I purchased off of Amazon. It's pretty cheap. It's not very expensive. Add a little bit of water. Your wet palette already has a little bit of water in there, but I want to thin this down a little bit. So I'm going to add just a little bit more water so it's about a 3 to 1 ratio, maybe 3 to 2 ratio. I'm also going to take some Abaddon Black. I'm going to add that to the wet palette, as well as some Dark Reaper. I'm going to have these paints fairly close to each other. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of that Abaddon Black and that Dark Reaper, and I'm going to mix these two. I want to create a shade somewhere in between the two colors. I might add just a little bit of water, but I'm going to start with just kind of this mid-tone, somewhere right in between the two. And with the thin brush, I'm going to start highlighting some of Darth Vader's helmet. I'm going to start with his helmet and work my way out. So I'm going to just start highlighting the edges here along his helmet. This will give us a nice base color. For Darth Vader, what I want to want to do is have the light coming down from the upper right, and also the light coming up from the lava and his lightsaber from the lower left. So the two lights are going to kind of hit. So on the right side of Vader, it's going to be a little bit more bright from the natural light. So I'm going to paint this on the back, back of his helmet, uh, maybe a little bit on the top of his helmet. It's fairly thin, as you notice here. So with the wet palette and adding a little bit more water, it really helps thin this paint. I want to apply this on fairly thinly onto the black. Again, I'm going over the edges here, over his eyes on his helmet, and I might even brighten this up just for the next step. I might even add just a little more Fenrisian gray to my wet palette. I'm going to introduce this into that paint that we just created. I'm going to create a mix actually between this and the Dark Reaper. Add just a little bit of water, and then somewhere in between the two shades, so almost an equal amount between the two. Again, I'm going to take my thin brush, my small brush, And then if the light is coming down from the upper right, then this is where it's going to be the brightest, where the light is going to reflect off of his helmet. So I'm going to start highlighting with the right side of, well, his left side of the helmet. Your right, his left. Maybe a little bit here on the top of his helmet, again, where the light is going to be coming down and reflecting off of his helmet. And there's going to be some light coming down here on the top of, just underneath his eye, on the bridge here, and then also on the bridge of his nose. So I'm going to highlight that. Again, I'm still working with that shade in between the Fenrisian Gray and the Dark Reaper. And it's fairly thin, but I'm going to add a second layer here where it's, again, going to be the brightest. And if you notice, I'm not adding too much on his right side of the helmet, your left, because the light is mainly going to come down from an angle. I'm just going to continue to highlight his helmet here as if the light is coming down. Now on the opposite side of the helmet on top, they're still going to have some light reflect here, so I'm going to add a little bit of highlight here. Just continue to highlight his helmet, where, especially on the edges. And again, right now I'm mainly concentrating on the helmet itself. I want to get the helmet done just right, and then I'll move on to his body. So now if the light is coming down from the top right, you're also going to have a little bit of light reflecting on his helmet. But I'm also going to highlight where the lava and his lightsaber is going to reflect. This will help bring the reds out when we paint over this. So you have to also imagine where his lightsaber is going to re reflect off of him, and you're going to paint over that as well. You're going to further highlight here on the helmet where the light is coming down and reflecting. I 
think this looks pretty cool so far. Now I'm gonna take some P3 Mara White. Now if you're just using Citadel, you can also use White Scar instead. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this next to the Fenrisian Gray, and I'm gonna create a shade now between the Fenrisian Gray and the White. So I'm gonna mix these two. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to thin this out even further. And I'm gonna further highlight the edges here where the light is coming down. I'm not gonna paint over all of the blue that we just painted on there, but I wanna take it a step further and just brighten up the edges just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go along the bridge of his nose on top here of his helmet, right above his eye on this lip. And if the light is coming down from above on the upper right, then I'm also gonna further highlight the light hitting his helmet here on the top. And then again here along the lower edges of his helmet on the side. I even add a little bit of gleam here on the front of his helmet. I'm gonna further blend this here as well. So I'm gonna blend this in just a little bit further. I'm gonna have the light coming down a little bit further on the top of his helmet here. I'm gonna take some thin black. I'm gonna further darken this up a little bit where the helmet curves in here. You notice I'm just jumping between these different shades that we have on our wet palette. That's the nice thing about using a wet palette. You can jump between the different shades here and really just kind of start blending this in. Okay, I might jump to just pure white and notice I just have a teeny bit on my brush but I'm going to add just a little bit of highlight here on these edges, right on top of his nose, just a little bit on the side of his, of his face, a little bit on the edges of his helmet here on top, just above his eyes. I think this looks pretty cool so far. Okay, next I'm going to take some lead belcher, and I'm going to add this to my wet palette. I'm not going to use very much. If you look really closely on Darth Vader's helmet, Two little bolts. I'm gonna paint those with the lead belcher. After that, we're ready to go ahead and move on to his body. So, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this shade kind of in between um, the Fenrisian gray and the white that we created and the dark reaper. And I'm gonna just start f highlighting his arms. Now again, if the light is coming up from the upper right, then it's gonna hit his arm here on the top of his glove. Mainly the tops of the folds here on his arm. I might take a brighter color that we've created and I add a little bit of that onto his arm where the light would hit most. Take a little bit of a darker shade here between the dark reaper and the black and I'm gonna now shade the opposite side of his arm. Now this side, the light isn't reflecting as much, but you will have some light reflecting off his lightsaber. So you're gonna to wanna to also highlight this as well. Now these highlights, I'm gonna start creating a nice base for the red, so I am gonna highlight this. Again, you have to imagine two different light sources, a light source from his lightsaber and a light source from a more natural light coming down above him. So you're gonna to wanna to highlight both sides, both angles. So I might add a little bit of highlight to his knuckles. I'm gonna end up darkening these just a little bit on his knuckles here in a little bit. This gives us a really nice base to work off of. I think this looks pretty cool so far. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to his legs. So I'm gonna take this darker shade here. And again, the light source is coming down from above. You're gonna to wanna to highlight the top of his leg here. Same thing, if the lightsaber is reflecting off, you're gonna to wanna to highlight his right knee as well on top. You're just working your way up. You're starting with a darker shade and then just working your way up to the highlights. So I'm gonna go a step higher or a step lighter and I'm gonna further highlight a little bit more. Each step that you take, getting brighter and brighter, you're gonna use less highlights. So the creases here on his pants, I'm gonna highlight here. Now the front of his shin, it's more smooth. So you're gonna have more light reflecting off of here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a brighter color here between the white and the Fenrisian gray. 
I'm going to create a streak going up the just on the side here where the light would reflect. As you notice, my paint is fairly thin as I'm doing this. I'm going to create another light streak coming up off here where the light will reflect. Just going off the front of his shin here. I even add a little bit of a light reflecting off of the inside here and also on the top of his knee. Now pay attention to the recesses here between his knee and also his shin here. You don't want to paint inside of that, keep that dark. That's where you'll have the natural shadows and everything else. I might take a black and just touch this up just a little bit here, just to make those, those light streaks a little bit thinner. Take a brighter white and I'm just going to add a little bit more highlight here on his knee. Just where the light will reflect, maybe on the tip of his boot as well. Again, if the light source is straight above him and off to the right, then that's where you want to add these highlights. Next, I'm going to take some Dawn Stone. I'm going to add that to my wet palette. I'm going to take a little bit of black and the Dawn Stone. I want to create a shade in between these two. I'm going to add just a little bit of water just to thin that out a little bit more. But first, I'm going to start with just pure Dawn Stone. Now, the edges are going to be black, and the more recessed areas are going to be gray. So it's the more recessed areas that I'm worried about, so I'm going to paint those with the Dawn Stone. Now I'm going to take that shade kind of in between. It's fairly thin, so I'm going to start painting the shadowed areas here between his cape and also his, his chest guard here. I'm not too worried about painting over the, the edges here with this shadowed paint. Just want to make sure this looks this blends pretty well. Because so I can repaint over that with black. And then just along the edges here, I'm gonna go back to Dawnstone. I'm gonna just paint just the edges just to brighten these up. This will help add a little bit of contrast here between the shadowed areas and the brighter areas of his chest plate here. I might add a little bit of white here just to further brighten that. Just want to get the edges a little bit brighter. Now I'm going to take pure black and then get any excess that you need off. And I'm still using a, a small brush. And now I'm going to paint over these edges that are coming down. Okay, and I think that does it for that step. Next, I'm going to take that mid shade between the black and the dark reaper. I'm going to further paint his shirt here. I don't want it to be completely black, but I just want to brighten that up a little bit. And I think that looks pretty cool. So go ahead and continue painting and continue to work on those highlights that you need to. But go ahead and pause the video here until you're ready to move on. But for the next step, we're going to go ahead and take some Stormhost Silver. And the Stormhost Silver, I want to paint the buttons here, the electronic device on his chest. That's where you're going to want to use a, a small brush. And then I'm also going to paint his belt buckle with the silver. Now he also has an electronic device on his left side. So again, I'm going to paint those buttons with the silver as well. And then same thing with his right side. All right, now I'm going to go back to lead belcher and just pure lead belcher, just straight from the pot. I'm going to go ahead and paint his hilt of his lightsaber with the lead belcher. As well as his handle. All 
All right, I'm gonna take almost pure dark reaper. I'm gonna put a base coat of this on that little chain that's going around his neck. And then I'm gonna further highlight it with some lead belcher. And with the lead belcher, I'm also gonna paint his device on his chest as well, the sides of it. Cool, now for our next step, we're gonna go back to some Dark Reaper and I'm gonna add some more to my wet palette. If you need to, go and add more. I'm gonna also add some Thunderhawk Blue. And I'm gonna mix these two almost an equal amount. The reason why I added a little bit more is because this is gonna be for his cape, so I want quite a bit. I'm also gonna add a little bit of water, so it's gonna be about a three to one ratio, three paint to one water. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of black just to darken that up a little bit more. And again, add, make sure it's fairly thin, but you're gonna paint the entire cape with this. It's kind of a darker bluish color. And I'm actually gonna use a number four brush. I'm gonna use a smaller brush if I need to for any detailed areas that are close to his helmet, but for the most part, I'm gonna use a larger number four brush. I'm gonna add a nice thin layer of this to his cape. Okay, now I'm gonna take two shades and just have them ready. I'm gonna take Nolan Oil and some Drakenhoff Nightshade. We're gonna go straight from the pots here, but I just wanna make sure that I have them handy. I'm gonna take a zero brush, so it's a fairly small brush. I'm gonna start just here on the plate here. I'm gonna add a little bit of the known oil just to shade this in a little bit. I'm not covering all of it completely, just mainly in the recessed areas. Same thing with his glove. I'm gonna add it to his, his shirt here, his pants, especially in the darker areas. I'm avoiding the most highlighted areas that we created with the known oil. I don't want to paint over that and darken up all the highlights that we created, but I want to make sure it gets into the recessed areas, maybe a little bit on his gloves, just to darken those up a little bit further. And then with the Drakenhoff Nightshade, I'm going to switch to that. I'm going to add a little bit of this into his, his sleeves here, especially where the light is coming down, because it's his, as you know, he's wearing black, but adding a little bit of blue in there, I think really just adds a little bit. I might use this to go over a little bit more on his pants and a little bit down here on the armor going around the lower half of his legs. I'm also going to add some of this to his helmet, especially in the darker areas which that's gonna be the back of his helmet, right in here in the recessed areas. Uh, maybe just a little bit over here on his, on his right side where it's not as bright. And then I might add just a little bit more here on the front of his helmet, maybe a little bit more known oil. I might just darken this up just a little bit further. Like I said, especially in these recessed areas and where his helmet curves inward. Okay, once that's completely dry, I'm gonna go back to his cape, I'm gonna add a second layer. Okay, now on my wet palette, I might add just a little bit more Thunderhawk Blue, just to brighten this up a little bit more. Again, you notice it's fairly thin, but now I'm gonna start highlighting his cape, where the light is gonna come down and hit most. So uh, like I said before, when you're adding highlights, you're gonna work your way up. Think of it like a pyramid. You're gonna add more of the, the base color, smaller amounts of paint as you build up the highlights. So I'm just gonna keep building up the creases here, adding that paint. Once you're done highlighting the different folds, I'm gonna mix in a little bit of Dawnstone just to brighten this up a little bit more. Maybe add just a little bit more water. And I'm gonna further highlight the folds of his cape, especially the top here where the light is gonna come down, that's gonna be a little bit brighter. And again, just go around and just add further highlights on the folds of his cape. Now to further blend that in a little bit, I'm gonna take a clean, lightly damp brush, not very much water in it at all, just very, very lightly damp. I'm gonna further blend this in just a little bit. Again, I'm gonna add some paint down here on the edges, then I'm gonna switch to my other brush. I'm gonna just blend that in here. Now 
Now if your paint is pretty thin, you want to do this before it dries. So you want to switch between the two brushes pretty quickly if you're going to wet blend between two brushes. Otherwise it's going to end up being kind of a mess. So I'm going to add a little bit more highlight here on the back here, maybe on the top of his cape. Again, where the light is going to hit, I'm going to start from the top and brush downwards. So that way the paint on my brush thins out as I go down. Okay, now we're going ahead and further highlight with some Othean Gray. So I'm going to add this to my wet palette and add just a little bit of that into that color that we've created just to further brighten this. Okay, and then with this, I'm gonna further highlight the, his cape. So, I mean, like I said before, you're really just continually building up the highlights, starting with that darker and just adding a little bit, a little bit at a time, just keep building it up, little by little. So on the top of his shoulder here, I'll add a little bit more highlight. Along this fold that's coming out, add a little bit more brightness to it, further highlight up. Now you have the light coming down from the top right, but this is really where his lightsaber is also going to reflect, so I'm going to highlight this as well. Not underneath so much, but the top here. Again, maybe the back of his cloak a little bit more. Now it looks a little bright right now, but don't worry, we'll deepen this just a little bit more later on. So I'm gonna highlight this, make it a little bit brighter, and then I'm gonna take one step back and then just re-darken it just a little bit further. I think this looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna go back to black and I'm gonna add some black back into here. I wanna dull in this color just a little bit more because now I'm gonna start bringing back some of the shadows. So I'm gonna paint this more in the recessed areas So go through and just kind of paint along the more recessed, darker areas where the shadows are going to hit. Might add a little bit more black here. Just kind of working my way backwards. I'm going to add some Cantor Blue to my wet palette. I don't want it pure black. I want kind of a darker black blue color. So I'm going to take my number four brush again and again continue to paint in these recessed areas. So just as the highlights, you got to think kind of opposite with this. Um, I'm going to add little by little into the more shadowed areas as I get darker and darker. Might deepen the, his cape down here a little bit more. Add a little bit more into this middle part of his cape on top. Again, add more black, start getting this darker and darker. I need to thin this out just a little bit more. And again, come into the most shadowed areas with this. Now it's gonna be pretty dark underneath here, underneath the fold behind his left arm. So I'm gonna paint that. And then down here in the shadows in here. If you need to, just like before, get another brush. And then while it's still wet, I'm just gonna fan that through. Now this brush is pretty dry. I'm gonna use it just as a dry brush. And I'm using that just to help blend it in while that paint is still wet. I think that really helps blend the paint in more. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna take P3 Mara White, or you can use Citadel White Scar. I'm gonna add this to my wet palette again. 
And I'm going to use this to paint his lightsaber. I'm going to add a nice white base paint, base coat to his lightsaber. This will make it so all the reds and everything else will brighten up a little bit more. Now while that's dry, I'm going to take Drakenhoff Nightshade again. I'm going to go straight from the pot here, and I'm going to apply this to the more recessed areas of his cape. And again, if you need to, take your dry brush and just fan that out or, or blend that in a little bit better. So especially down here in the highlight areas, I want to blend it in better. I don't want such a dramatic line between the highlights and the dark. So I'll take my dry brush and just kind of fan this in a little bit. So that way it just introduces a little bit into the highlighted areas of his cape. Again, I'll come into here in the more recessed areas. I might add some into this armor on the front of his legs as well. And on top of his boot. And his knee. And then I'm going to switch back to Known Oil. And I'm going to do the same thing into his cape. I'm going to add a little bit of Known Oil as well into the recessed areas. And I'll take my other brush, my dry brush, and just fan that out. Just blend that in. I might add a little bit into his helmet here. Not very much. I just want to add a little bit more known oil just to darken this up just a little bit more. Okay, now we're ready to move on. So I'm going to take some Ephesun Red and we're going to now go ahead and work on the lightsaber as well as the lights reflecting off of his cape. So I'm going to add that to my wet palette. And I'm going to go ahead and paint a layer of this onto his lightsaber. I'm going to cover the whole thing with Mephiston Red. And then I'm going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet and add this to my wet palette next to the Mephiston Red. I'm now going to add a layer of this onto his lightsaber. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of white. I'm just going to go down the center of his lightsaber with the white. It's thinned out. Make sure your white is thinned out when you do this. And that the lightsaber is completely dry. I might even add a couple layers just to make sure that's pretty bright. I might take a little bit of the Evil Sun Scarlet and the white. I'm just going to add a nice thin streak going across there. And I'm going to go back to Memphis on Red and I'm going to start highlighting where the light is reflecting off of his arm and also off of his glove. So those highlights that we created, I'm going to add a nice thin layer of Memphis on Red just to paint over that. I might take a dry brush and just kind of dry brush that in as well. And along the right side of his right leg, I'm going to add a little bit of red here just to add a bit of light. Again, if the light is reflecting off of his lightsaber, it's going to hit the right side of his leg, so I'm going to add a little bit of this to the right side of his leg. On the folds of his clothes and then also on his helmet here on the right side where we added those highlights. So this is that second light source from his lightsaber coming up and reflecting off of his helmet. As well as the edges here of his armor. Now this is going to be on the left side. I'm going to keep the right side of this armor, his left, your right, um, with the natural light color. As well as the buttons here on his electronic device. I'm going to paint those red that we painted with the silver. Okay, while well, all that is drying, we're going to go ahead and switch over to his base. For the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Sterling Mud. And you're going to take this straight from the bottle. And what you're going to do, you're actually going to kind of cake it on. And then after you've caked it on, be careful not to get any on Darth Vader himself. But just kind of push it around here. 
And on the right side of the base, I want to create just kind of a mound here. And I don't have any on the left side. If you can see here, most of it is just caked on the right side of them. And then Secret Weapon has a pack of skulls. It's called Sack of Skulls by Secret Weapon. And these are pretty cool. I really like these. They have a lot of detail. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a couple of skulls to his base. So just with some tweezers while that mud is still wet, I'm just going to put a couple of skulls here into the mud. And then once that mud dries, it will seal that in. And then I might put a little bit of mud just on top here within the crack, as if it's just kind of built up. These skulls have been here for a little while. And so I'm going to put just a little bit of mud here just in between, not very much. And that's it for the first step. Um, you're going to want to let that dry completely. Personally, I usually wait 24 hours for the mud to dry completely, just to make sure it's completely hard. But, but once it's completely dry, I'm going to take some Imperial Primer. I'm not just going to paint the skulls with the Imperial Primer. And then once that Imperial Primer is dry, I'm going to take some Corn Red. I'm going to add this to a wet palette. And then on the left side is where most of the lava is going to be. So I'm going to paint the left side of the base with the corn red. Okay, and then once that's done, I'm going to take some squig orange. I'm going to add that to the, to the wet palette as well. I'm going to take just a little bit of the squig orange. And I just want to put a little bit here into the base of this mud that we created. And this is just mostly kind of along the edges here. I'm going to be painting over this here shortly, but I just want to add a little bit of this squig orange into there. Next, I'm going to take some scrag brown. And then with a dry brush, I'm going to put a little bit at the tip of the dry brush. Not very much. You want to make sure you have, just have a little bit on there. And then I'm going to work that in on a paper towel. Get all the excess off. You, it's better to have too little on your dry brush than too much. We're going to dry brush over the skulls just to give a little bit of burnt ash onto the skulls. Next thing I'm going to take some Abaddon Black. I'm going to put a thin layer over that squig orange that we painted on there. Maybe a little bit on top of the skulls as well. Not very much. Mostly along the base here. My next step I'm going to take some Mephiston Red and I'm going to add this to my wet palette. Now I want to thin this out a little bit. I don't want it too thick. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that Mephistone Red for my wet palette. I'm going to add this on where we painted the corn red. So I'm just going to paint over all the corn red with the Mephistone Red. And then while it's still wet, don't wait for it to dry. Take some Troll Slayer Orange and add this to your wet palette. Add some water to really wet that down. And then I'm just going to start mixing this in. Not very much. I don't want to cover all the Mephistone Red. Just kind of swirl it around, just to give it kind of a nice liquidy look here. I'm going to do it kind of in the middle. I'm going to keep the edges red from the Mephistone Red. But if you look here, you'll notice that I mainly put this into the center area around his feet and, and just to give it kind of a wet look. And it blends in really well with the Mephistone Red. And my next step, I'm going to take some Flash Gets Yellow. Again, add this to Wet Palette. And same thing, do this quickly so the base doesn't dry. But I'm going to take some of the yellow, and I'm going to have a little bit less than this than the previous step. Mostly swirl it around here in the middle area where it's going to be the hottest from the lava. Now you're going to want to let that completely dry. And then once it is dry, you're going to take some agrellin earth. You're going to add just kind of a thick layer of this on the base. Paint over everything you just did except for the skulls and maybe just add a, a thin layer along the edges around the skulls. This way, the thicker it is, the larger the cracks. The thinner it is, the smaller the cracks. Push around, just be mindful not to get any on Vader. You don't want to have to go back and do any touch-ups. But you're going to let that completely dry. I would give it a good three to four hours. You want to make sure it's completely dry so all the cracks have formed and also it's not really forgiving. You don't want it to, to break off. But once it's completely dry, I'm going to take a small dry brush, and I'm going to take that Abaddon Black. I'm going to carefully paint over all of these platelets that we've created. Try not to get in any in between the cracks to paint over the lava that we just painted. 
I'm gonna come back here and paint over all the mud that may still be remaining and all the cracks over here. Paint around the skulls and again go over all these little platelets that we created. I'm gonna to touch up the rim of his base as well. I just wanna make sure that's pure black so I'm gonna go over that as well. This is looking pretty cool. So now I'm gonna go back to Scrag Brown. I'm gonna add a little bit to my dry brush again. Again, get off any excess using a paper towel. I'm just gonna go lightly over the edges here of the base, maybe a little bit over the platelets here. This is why you wanna make sure that they're completely dry so they don't flake off. Might go over the skulls just a little bit more, just to brighten that up a little bit further. Okay, my next step, I'm gonna take some Carrick Stone. And I'm going to use this on the skulls. I'm going to, again, put a little bit on the dry brush, not very much. I'm just going to dry brush lightly on the skulls. After that, I'm going to take P3 Meneth White Highlight. Now, if you don't have this, then you can use White Scar or another white that you might have. I don't want to go overboard with this, mainly just along the edges of the skulls here, on the face of the skulls. Okay, and then I'm going to mix a little bit of the Mephistone Red and that Corn Red. I want to create just kind of an equal amount of that between those two colors. And then I'm going to paint just in between the cracks here of the platelets. Just to make it appear as if the lava is reflecting off of the edges here of the platelets here. I think that does it. So your next step, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and seal it with a lacquer. And then once that lacquer is completely dry, what I would do is take some Ard Coat and paint over his helmet, especially the, the main top part of his helmet. I didn't end up going over the, his face mask with the art coat, but just the helmet itself. But other than that, I think it looks pretty cool. I really like how this turned out. Now, if you like this video, be sure to also click the subscribe button below. And if you want to help support future videos, look for a link in my description to my Patreon page and become a supporter. In turn, you'll also be able to vote for what miniatures you'd like to see painted, and at the same time have a chance to win some awesome prizes, as well as some of the painted miniatures like the ones that you see in my videos. But as always, thanks again for watching and thank you for painting with Nerd Paints.